Welcome on board my channel Edu Marine by Maverick Marine. This channel aims to provide free information on topics related to marine engineering which would help aspirants to crack MEO competency exams. Stay tuned. Okay, let us see MAPOL Annex 6. In that, we will see Annex 6 Chapter 3 that is requirements for control of emissions from ship. In that, we will see Regulation 13, Nitrogen Oxides, that is NOx regulations. In this, we will try to understand what is EIAPP. EIAPP is Engine International Air Pollution Prevention Certificate. Okay, now let us see what it is. What is EIAPP? Okay, so uh, Asics Chapter 3 Regulation 13, it has certain guidelines okay and requirements which are given in mapol so when the engine manufacturer uh, ma manufactures the engine which are greater than or equal to 130 kilowatt and they follow the requirements given in regulation 13 then the engine is eligible for obtaining eiapp okay but the question comes how will you get certification without testing okay for the same, a NOx technical code is applicable. Okay, this technical code actually deals with testing, certification, and standards set for testing and measurement procedures of NOx as per Regulation 13. Okay, so basically, what what does NOx technical uh, code has? It has the uh, the aim of NOx technical code is to standardize. Okay, it is to standardize the testing and measurement procedures test equipments those are those are also being standardized and the process of certification okay that is also usko bhi, it's supposed to be standard you know there, there should be some standard set of certificates standard testing procedures standard measuring procedures so those are actually mentioned in the nox technical code okay so now as we said the certificate should be standard right so if you open Knox Technical Code in that Appendix 1, okay, Appendix 1 of Knox Technical Code has the form of EIAPP. Form as in how, how an EIAPP certificate is supposed to be structured, that is given in Appendix 1. It's a sample copy, for example. Okay, now let us see forward. So basically, uh, EIAPP issues it. So basically, EIAPP is issued by flag or it is issued by RO on behalf of flag. Okay. Uh, so basically what happens is flag is not present everywhere. So what flag will do is flag has its own set of regulations. So it will pass those regulations to RO. Then RO will perform a survey as per the requirements of flag. If RO is satisfied that okay, this particular engine has been certified, tested as per the flag's requirement, then it can issue an EIAPP on behalf of flag. Okay. So, one thing what you have to remember is this EIAPP, it is valid lifetime of engine, but there is a but unless there is any major modification. Okay, uh, for example, if you want to increase power of the engine, you can add a higher capacity turbocharger. Okay, when you add a higher capacity of turbocharger, you will have higher peak pressures. Okay, when you have higher peak pressures, you will have higher temperatures. That is why there will be changes in the NOx pattern. So, this is a major modification. Okay, if you do this on, on engine, on any engine, then uh, your EIA existing EIAPP certificate becomes invalid. So it may have. So if you any major modification on the engine, so your existing EIAPP will be invalid. Then you will have to take again the, the survey will be taken again. In that case, what will happen is the RO or the flag will contact the engine manufacturer and they will check with them about the test results of the modification on basis that 
on basis of those results uh, your ro or your flag will give the certificate okay or or you use parts which are not imo certified by the engine manufacturer okay in that case also your eia pp certificate will be invalid for example your turbocharger nozzle ring it will have a unique imo number okay so the manufacturer when it is going to provide you with a part jaise nozzle ring so it will have a number stamped on it that is the imo number okay so if you modify the nozzle ring ya fir aapne uh, you get it uh, purchased from some other uh, third party okay third party supplier and it does not have a nox uh, number on that so in that case that is also considered invalid modification okay it is considered to be a modification and in that case your eia pp will cease to exist okay in case if the vessel changes flag or ro the certificate will be invalid okay so for example my vessel was earlier registered with marshall islands and now it is registered with panama so then your eipp will cease to exist similarly if my vessel is registered with abs class and then they change the class to lr then your certificate will be invalid existing certificate will be invalid then the new class or the new flag will issue another eipp eiapp certificate this is the test results okay now let us go forward and we'll see how an eiapp certificate looks like okay this is an example of eiapp certificate in which i will tell you small small details now so here on the right side if you see you will see a cert over here it's a certificate number the certificate number for this eiapp is printed over here then here you will find uh, the stamp or logo of your class or flag then underneath it is written all basic basic cheese like how uh, who who has issued it under what mepc uh, session it has been issued under all those things will be all those details will be mentioned here okay then what you will find over here is engine manufacturer okay engine manufacturer so your engine manufacturer's name will be mentioned over here then the model number say for example over here the model number is 6g 60 mec okay now here you will find the serial number okay so serial number of the parent engine okay here yahan pe parent engine likha hua hai so now what is parent engine okay so basically your manufacturer your manufacturer will make one full engine after a lot of testing and r&d they will make one production model of the engine and that production model will undergo tests as per nox technical code okay so serial number of that particular engine is mentioned here and the engine on which testing is done is parent engine i will tell you in a very simple way for example apple manufacturer manufactures iphones okay so this there will be one parent phone on which all the testing is done obviously apple once the tests are passed only then it will start production models which will be distributed to users like us now your phone will be certified on the basis of test results from the parent phone okay your brand new phone will not be tested your parent phone is tested they have just made a replica of the parent phone similarly in our case one parent main engine will be developed and all the engines which are fitted on different different ships are the replica of that particular parent engine okay so over here they have written test cycle that is e3 okay so these e3 and all these things they they are codes for certain tests which are test cycles which are carried out okay that will be mentioned in nox technical code what exactly is e3 and details okay we don't need to go into the that much details because no one will ask you those details then power of the engine is given okay power of the engine is 11350 kilowatt 
speed of the engine is 80 rpm okay now this is engine approval number this is basically after conducting survey after conducting survey particular class or particular flag will issue one approval number for that particular engine model obviously class is not going to go and do survey on all engine models correct so there is an approval number for that particular engine model so basically 6g 60 mec will find one approval number over here that is mentioned okay then you have then all other details are mentioned over here so you don't need to be worried about that then one important thing which is mentioned is place of issue okay where it is where the certificate has been issued at so basically it is a test test bed where it is issued generally on the basis of that so over here it is Busan technical support office okay then when and when is it issued where and when it is issued okay so that was basically issued on 12th may 2016 so over here you will find the IMO number of your ship IMO number of your ship which is mentioned on the certificate over here because your ship is fitted with this particular engine model okay now over here in this blue box you will find surveyor who has done the survey so surveyor ka details like details of the surveyor will be mentioned over here surveyor name surveyor stamp uh, then your class or flag stamp and uh, signature signature of survey okay now this uh, this eiapp certificate will also have supplements attached to it okay now let us see the supplements okay so this is the suppl supplement certificate number is the same certificate number eiapp certificate this is just attached to it so over here what what all details do you find on your attachments or the supplement so manufacturer's name and address they say over here it will be main and the address where the engine is manufactured place of engine build so is the same place it might happen that you know one of the engine manufacturer uh, will have its main office somewhere else the address is that address but the engine is built at a different place okay but in this case it is built at the same place office b wahi pe hai office is also there and the engine is also built in the same place okay so now date of engine build so when was the engine built okay then place of pre-verification survey and date okay so now what what is this pre-verification survey so basically when a engine is built they will carry out a pre-verification survey in which they will see whether your uh, measuring equipment your test procedure your fuel which you are going to use is it as per your uh, nox technical code requirements so that those certificates are checked in the pre-verification survey okay then you will find uh, engine type and model yeah so this is two stroke man 6g mec you know 6g 60 mec so that engine type and model number is given over here then again serial number of the parent engine is put over here okay serial number of parent engine now we will see the next part okay the second page of the supplement what all it will have the approval reference number is this same number engine approval number that is mentioned in the supplement okay then again what they will mention they will mention engine power and rpm then what are the cycle type so over here it is e3 then parent engine test fuel specification see i told you some time back that they will also verify the fuel specs which are used for testing so consa fuel like which fuel which grade of fuel has been used so th that those details will be provided here so over here you have the density at 15 degrees celsius really it is lsmgo which is used okay then this part is for what what requirement testing engine say for example over here they have tested the engine for tier 2 so what is the imo limit as uh, for tier 2 tier 2 imo uh, sorry tier 2 nox limit as per imo that is mentioned over here which is 
14.4 grams per kilowatt hour for engines less than 130 rpm okay then you will find the actual NOx results for the engine those are mentioned in the supplement so if you go on your ship you will find this for main engine generator engines i am just giving example for main engine so over here you will find the parent engine actual test results so the requirement is requirement set by imo is 14.4 engine achieved 13.3 hence your engine is nox compliant okay then the nox uh, technical code nox technical file details basically every engine will have nox technical file okay each engine will have its own nox technical file those details are mentioned here when was the nox technical file approved that date is given over here okay then over here you will find the identification numbers for validation or uh, verification procedure like testing and measuring details those are given okay so over here you will find the testing and measuring details and at the end you will find issued at where so here it is busan technical support office and surveyor sign name place class stamp okay that is mentioned i hope you have understood this so just go through these things okay they might ask okay what are the details in the supplement but obviously you cannot remember all full details but basic basic important things you should remember is manufacturer details then uh, serial number of parent engine you know then he might ask you for what is parent engine then you can tell him what is parent engine then fuel specs nox tier actual values you know nox technical file these are some important things which are mentioned in the supplement okay now let us see the uh, how 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 it is issued okay so now it's a flow chart it's a simple flow chart with which you can remember how eiapp is given okay so for diesel engines greater than equal to is say for example is your engine greater than 130 kilowatt if no then you don't need any eiapp okay yes then you go down over here is it installed after jan 2000 yes then you have to go but if it, if it was installed before jan 2000 then you don't need any eiapp certificate so after this yes you go down have you done any major modifications no okay because the way engine has come we have used you are using it so okay no modifications so it will issue eiapp certificate okay but if you have done manufact uh, if you have done modification then they will uh, the class or the flag they will contact the engine builder they will they will check the test results with the modifications if they are satisfied then the flag will issue uh, eiapp okay okay thank you so much i hope you have understood how eiapp is issued what all details are given in eiapp thank you so much i hope you found the topic interesting for more topics Hit subscribe and bell icon for updates. Thank you.